welcome back we are looking at 9.6 which is diesel cycle yeah the idle cycles for compression ignition engine so in diesel engines only air is compressed during the compression stroke yeah? earlier was air and fuel but this one only air is compressed yeah so uh, eliminating the possibility of auto ignition which is the engine knock itself therefore diesel engine can be designed to operate at much higher compression ratios compared to the SI engines, typically between 12 to 24, yeah. So, once it's compressed, what happens is that the air is compressed, the fuel is injected, yeah. Fuel is actually injected at very high pressure. So, there is no spark plug, yeah. There's no spark plug in a diesel engine. So, the moment is the fuel is injected at a very high uh, mm, pressure and velocity, there will be uh, some sort of... Um, uh, 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 what do you call uh, collision between the molecules and there will be ignition yeah so that's how the uh, the fuel gets combusted uh, in the uh, chamber in the piston itself yeah so the process is different from uh, um, from the uh, gasoline engine cycle itself so for the PV graph and for the TV uh, TS graph this is how it looks one to two is isentropic compression yeah one to two isentropic compression and then we have two to three heat addition and then we have three to four isentropic and four to one uh, uh, heat rejection yeah so this is for the pv graph so we have this isentropic uh, line going down three to four and then one to two is also isentropic otherwise the pressure is constant here and the volume is constant here yeah okay these are the important formulas yeah it's a bit slightly different from the um, or the gasoline uh, the petrol uh, cycle earlier yeah so q in q in is cp t3 uh, minus t2 or you can say difference between the enthalpy okay and then we have the q out yeah q out q out is the change between u4 to u1 which is also can be represented by cv multiplied with the temperature change okay the efficiency of diesel will be one minus t4 minus uh, t4 minus t1 over k t3 minus t2 yeah now we have new thing here which is the cutoff ratio cutoff ratio is given by rc and then we also have a uh, ratio uh, r the the compression ratio yeah so R rc is the cutoff ratio uh, and then what else do i need okay and then we have the k value which is uh, always 1.4 mostly it's 1.4 yeah so you plug in all this information inside you can actually calculate the efficiency of diesel cycle yeah okay so what we have here um, a dual cycle a more realistic ideal cycle model for modern high speed compression ignition engine so this is a example of a dual cycle but what you need to concentrate is actually uh, both the petrol and the diesel cycle so i'm just going to bring you to this question solving this question uh, it's a bit complicated because the the version that i have here is uh, in non-si version so just let's ignore the units i i know we shouldn't be ignoring the units but then you know because i have no choice but i'm having a non-si version with me yeah so let's look at this question your textbook is on the si version so you know you just can use the similar thing uh, you can just refer to your textbook I'll just breeze through this quickly. Yeah. So, a, a diesel, uh, an ideal diesel cycle, working fluid is air. Yeah, mostly it's air. Compression ratio is R. Yeah, R is compression ratio. Cutoff ratio RC is actually 2. Okay, and uh, the uh, working fluid is at pressure 14.7, temperature 80, and then the volume is uh, 117 inches square inches cube utilizing the cold air standard assumption determine the temperature and pressure uh, of the air at the end of each process so at the end of each process so they they want uh, us to find for the temperature and pressure temperature pressure temperature pressure temperature pressure and temperature pressure yeah so beginning it's actually starting at 14.7 psi and 80 so this one number one we know but we don't know two three and four so we need to find all that so the network output and the thermal efficiency and the mean effective pressure the MEP yeah so 
if you look at this question the properties will be the r value that you need to look up for in the table and then we have the cp value and cv value remember because the formula um, for the q and you need to find the cp and cv all this table is actually found in table a to ea yeah ea is as a non si table yeah so we have the pv diagram in the idle diesel cycle described in figure 9.24 you can just refer that to the textbook figure 9.24 uh, oh yeah it's just beside here 9.24 mm, okay now what else uh, we know that the air contained in the cylinder is, is in the form of fuel cycle okay let's move on to solve the question so the information that's given is v1 is given and r is given so you can actually find the v2 okay from the v2 the compression ratio is actually rc you can find the v3 this is it goes like a jigsaw puzzle and v4 and v1 is the same value because it's actually isochoric yeah same um, what do you call it? same volume so finally now you have actually managed to find your v1 given v2 done v3 done and v4 is the same as v4 is the same as v1 so the volume are all settled now let's let, let's move on to the uh, temperature the first temperature is actually given yeah to find the second temperature this is the standard formula that you need to plug in this formula is actually also given in the thing so v1 over v2 is given in the question as 18 yeah because it's a compression uh, ratio so you can get t2 17 point uh, 1716 rand kind okay then you can find for your p2 similar method okay that's settled now from this graph we know that the p p2 and p3 is the same right so use that as a hint so you have your p3 settled okay with this hint here you can actually plug it into the idle gas law and uh, you can find your t3 so it's just like a jigsaw puzzle yeah and because it's isentropic expansion similar formulas as, as isentropic can you see similar formulas use the similar formulas to actually find the fourth one so first part of the question is settled so it's just like a jigsaw puzzle second part of the question is actually asking you for the network output and thermal efficiency so how do you find network output okay so network output uh, okay in this case you need to find the mass first yeah because all the values is actually in um, uh, what do you call that uh, specific you need to multiply them by mass yeah so this is the first step to find the mass so q in is actually given by the change of h3 minus h2 or cp t3 minus t2 so you have this t3 you have this t2 cp you can get from the table just explained to you earlier so you just multiply you get your q in and similar manner q out is actually using your u4 yeah u4 is actually associated with cv delta t plug in the information you get your q out so what's the work net q in minus Q out, you get your work net. What is the efficiency? W uh, net divided by Q in. So you get the efficiency of the uh, engine. The next last one is actually to find the MEP. MEP is also a standard formula. Plug in all the information that you have actually got from the previous working. 1.297, V1 minus V2. So you get your MEP as 110 PSIA. So this is the end of this chapter. Yeah, uh, so please do the questions that's, uh, that is requested to and submit it on, on time, yeah, in time, bye.